All right, guys, so today's finally of the day. We have Dwayne's uh, S85 engine for his M5 sitting here. We waited forever, for literally ever, to get the rod bolts. We finally got the rod bolts. We had them for almost a week. Been busy with other things, as you guys know, with the Porsche project. Um, and yeah, if you guys don't know, we have a Porsche channel, Nathan's Porsche Workshop. Philip, we gotta remember to put a link in the description. We'll probably forget. It's Nathan's Porsche Workshop. Anyhow, we're over there almost every day now, posting videos. And we are also waiting on one piece for this engine to be able to do the swap, and that is the SMG clutch tool, which is about $400, and apparently on back order. But I did get notification today that hopefully it'll be here Tuesday. So it's time to go ahead and put his new rod bearings in, uh, reassemble everything in the bottom end of this thing. So this thing is somewhat ready on the engine stand to do the swap with. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Let's go ahead and put this oil pan down here out of the way. We have a new gasket somewhere for this thing. Ew, ew, nasty. Everything will get new OEM or better than OEM parts. Uh, one thing we did not do, and I thought we had one here, was the new rear main and front mains. And we were just talking to Phil about that. I thought I ordered a whole stack of front mains, but I don't see them anywhere. So we'll have to do that. Let's go ahead and start off with number 10 cylinder first. Let's go ahead and go in. All these are finger tight because if you remember correctly, we already had this apart to show you guys once. We did not take the top bearings out. So always remember when you take these apart, you have to stack these back on there the way they came off. You cannot flip it. That's a no-no. That'll grenade the engine. These are cracked caps, so they do matter which way they go. I'll set that right there for right now. We'll push that out the bottom just a little bit and pull our top bearing out. There we are. And there is our top bearing. It actually looks pretty good. No copper showing, no issues at all. And then let's go ahead and reinstall a new bearing. And we're putting our ACL extra clearance race bearings in. There you go, sorry, I'm just holding shit up random. Phil's trying to follow me with the camera. Standard. And then we'll go ahead and get a little pre-lube on it. like show, give her a little smear around and we'll push this up. Like that, line your notch up, goes in here like this. Line the bearing up, it is all the way down in there. There we go. Let that fall down for a second. Remember, this is the top. We'll take that bearing out. We don't care about that. We're gonna replace that anyway. There's a the bottom bearing. So not too bad. Let's go ahead and take another. Getting delirious misplacing stuff. Another bearing out. A little pre-lube on it. Smear it around, and this one is going to reinstall like this. If you're wearing rubber gloves, be careful not to get any pieces of your rubber gloves stuck in the bearing to change the tolerances. There we go on that. This one goes in here like so. If I could get it up there again. Pull it up like that. This one goes up like this. Push it on her and the crack totally seals up like that. Then we're gonna go over here and take our ACL grease. We're gonna take a new 
raw bolt right here. We'll put a little gravy on it. If you guys are gonna have a shop do this, be very careful. There is no room for mistake in here. And it is not uncommon for a lazy shop to do this and the engine will blow up. You have to be very experienced with this and pay very close attention because you don't get a second chance at all. Okay, there's that. I wipe my hands off here. We gotta change our socket. No big deal. There we go. There we go. And then, here we go. I'm just gonna barely snug these. And then we're gonna change over to our torque wrench. And we're gonna go the foot pounds, but she's already on 50. And we're gonna end up at 50 foot pounds on this. So let's go ahead and do it this minute. We'll go to a little bit snug. We'll do it in, let's say three stages. I'm looking at the wrench, that's about 25. Now let's go and go all the way to the 50 mark and it should beep. All right, go back and recheck just to make sure. Always, always, always. And there it is, boys and girls. Nothing to it, right? And it seems like there is nothing to it, but one flaw, one mistake, one spin of the cap, one failure to torque, one failure to remember to put the lubricant on the bottom of there, it's over. I mean, it's, this is a $10,000 engine. This is over. So let's not do that. Phil's gonna put the camera on maybe time lapse or something here. We're gonna go on down the line, do the other nine of them. Then we're gonna stack in the oil pump, the vandals pump, and we're gonna set the vandals pump. Deal the rod bearings without any issue. Like we said before, none of them are very bad at all. Everything looked really good. There's no copper showing on any of them. I went really smooth. So what we're gonna do now is reinstall uh, both oil pumps and set with our caliper the lash for the Vanos oil pump. We're gonna put a new l ring gasket on and reassemble. So we'll see how that goes. set that on there i tell you what guys this is a little bit easier to do when it's not in the car it's like set it up there and not to hold it it's just all in there correctly with no issue we're going to use the same vandals pump this is a very low mileage engine and this vandal pump has no issue one bit whatsoever looking at the bearing all around there's no issue at all with it or you drop that vandals pump in we'll put a little Deal in here like so. That's for the chain tensioner. Let's set this up in there like that. Got our bolt and our sprocket has to go on. Let's kind of reassemble as we go here. We cannot forget, we also have a new Vanos line from Dr. Vanos. Kind enough to send this over to us for this engine. I'll put a link in the description for this. This is a a sponsored part for this engine. He also sponsored us on the Vanos pump on the convertible on the M6, the Vanos line on that. So very interesting, very good deal. Um, obviously taking this one out is gonna be a five second deal. So let's uh, get everything bolted in up here and then we'll do this line next. Okay, you just kind of tell. We're looking for about seven foot pounds on that. And then we got our three Vanos pump bolts loose. The Vanos pump kind of sitting in there. We'll torque that after everything's all done. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And the very last thing we're gonna do is put the Vanos line in. 
We have three tins that hold this vandals pump in. It really is pretty simple. We'll put our little tensioner spring deal down right there. And then what's gonna happen is that's gonna pull back and forth to set the lash on it. Now, some guys actually will uh, put the chain on very last. It doesn't really matter in my book. You just need a minute amount of slack in that to adjust that pump. Let's go ahead and tighten this down for this moves. We just got this at, oh boy, going the wrong way. And it pulling it. I don't have enough strength to do it. We're at 0.5. We're at 0 0.005. We need to be six to eight. It is so microscopic close that's probably totally fine. Uh, but that's the valve lash all from this gear to the crank gear. Okay, so it's got it and it's eight. If I force it really hard, it goes to 10. So it's a proper lash, six to eight, is why I can move it easily, two. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna turn this off. This thing's kind of funky, get set up. and turn the magnet off and it comes right off. We stuck that to the front. So now that's all set up. Now, remember, we need to go ahead and tighten this guy up. We make sure all of our other bolts are tight. Then we gotta do our vandal line. But I did forget, we should have, took the vano line out before and replaced it before putting this pump in. I don't think we'd get it out with the pump in. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so let's go ahead and, and when this is in the car, this could be quite the uh, mess getting this out of here for sure. Because in a car, you don't have that much clearance to get it all out. <laughs> And there she is, boys. I don't suspect this thing's bad. Let's see if we could date it here real quick. 2006. 2006. So this is the original one. So we're gonna take this guy out here. We're gonna save this, even though we got our other one. And then this is pretty much garbage. We'll get the new one from Dr. Vanos. All right, here's a new Vano slime. Put a new Viton O-ring on it. Put some grease on it. Some non-petroleum uh, grease. We got two new crush washers for the other side of this for the banjo bolt uh, that goes on the pump. The pump is just sitting here just loose. We're going to very creatively try to fish this up in here. Without knocking anything out place this thing is a freaking sometimes in the cars when you put these in you can just put them right in sometimes it takes literally forever all right so let's go ahead and do this we got the line of finally 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 I'm gonna slip this back so it lines up like so. And then let's make sure our tensioner is still in. We'll set this back down in there like that. We'll put our bolt and our tensioner once more. Put three bolts in our pump. And then the next thing we're gonna have to do, snug these up just a little bit, tighten our tensioner bolt up here. And then we pretty much can't do anything unless we tighten these bolts down first. All right guys, so here we are. Um, so we just reassembled everything. We got the lash at 0 0.08, which is towards the top end of where it's supposed to go. We had to take the Vanos line loose again to get that to work right. It was like holding it, messing it up. Um, so we put the bolt back up in the tensioner. We put the Vanos line bolt back in with the crush washers. 
We have both the bolts back here in the oil pickup, the three bolts in the main oil pump, the three 10 mils in the Vanos oil pump. And we made sure and put our tensioner spring and little plug back in the bottom of the tensioner and everything is working and functioning properly. You always wanna go back and push down on that and make sure that thing has give, make sure that's, that slug and that spring is set in the right. If you take this out in the car, it'll fall out on the ground. You might lose it, so be warned of that. Uh, we torqued our uh, nut down for our oil pump, turn the engine over, everything seems like everything is good to go. And we're gonna wait to put the oil paint on because unfortunately I'm out of time for today. Uh, so we'll just maybe just set it over there to keep any dust out of it. And then tomorrow, the next day, I'll actually finalize all the bolts on the oil pan. And then we're just waiting on that damn clutch tool for Dwayne's car to be able to do the swap. When we do the swap, I would love to be able to bring it in here, take the whole subframe, transmission, everything out in one go. Probably take the whole next day, swapping everything over. And probably the next day, put it back in and hook it up. That's ideal. Um, three days and we're done. We say that, but does it ever work that way? No, it does not. The problem is on S85 stuff, we have to order one damn part. It's a bad deal. It's forever. We also have another S85 coming in whenever I say go on it. Uh, another M6 to do the rod bearings on. I don't remember how many miles it said was 90-ish thousand miles on it. And SMG clutch issue and rod bearings. Uh, we're going to pick up an Audi tomorrow. We'll have more on that coming up. I don't know. It's a busy weekend. We'll see you guys later. Have a good day.